guys, welcome back. Today's a fun one. Today is all about designs that need to die. Now, this is just my opinion and you are free to roll with these if they rock your life, but you have been warned. First up is that hot mess that is the re My watch fell off, sorry. Oh God. First up, number one is that hot mess that is the Lazy Boy recliner. Oh, these are bad guys, but if you want a recliner, and who doesn't? We all like to chill a little bit in a horizontal position on occasion. Let's get one with some style. Oh my gosh. Yes, they do exist. Now, recliners, I kind of consider one of those necessary evils because Quite frankly, people do really like them and use them a lot. But what's great now is that there's so many good new hot little options that go with a lot of different design saw statements. Like, look at this beautiful one from Natuzzi. Ooh, that is actually the Rolls Royce of recliners. If you really want an investment chair, that Natuzzi is gorgeous. And it comes in leathers and Oh my gosh, it does everything for you. And then there's other options like Pottery Barn and the Wells comes both in leather and in fabric. And you've got a couple of other ones that even look transitional or traditional. So there are lots of good options out there. We'll link some down below, but they're all going to be in the Design Club store. So if you haven't signed up yet, shameless plug, you need to go to the Design Club with a Z Dot com and sign up because that's where you'll be able to get all of these fun goodies as soon as we open up, which is super soon. Number two of trends that have got to die is glass mosaic horizontal band backsplashes. Oh, this puppy is stick a fork in it done. It has overstayed its welcome. Honestly, it kind of screams cheap flip or maybe even just phoned in, peel and stick. It's just not a good look. There's lots of different options out there. Consider like cement tile. And if you really like that idea, you've definitely got to check out this video that I did on all things tile that features Lily tile, which is one of my favorite, favorite cement tile options. There's also stainless. Woo, that's sexy and different, which is really good. You can do stone just like there is on the countertops, which wraps up the back. That's really luxurious and beautiful and different. Heck, you can even do some oblong narrow tiles. Oh, just not in multicolored and horizontal. Look at this beautiful one that's done all in the same tone with a matching grout in a beautiful chevron in this bone color. That's a beautiful solution and still fairly inexpensive and using the same materials, just using them in a fresh and different way. So there's your solution to number two, glass tile has got to go. So number three of trends that oh, have to go guys is word art. Now, Let's talk about word art for a second. Word art is really just carved material that says a word. It's overplayed. It's been overdone. We have seen it for years with the same old words popping out. Oh my gosh, it's done, done, done. Now, if you are interested in the idea of word art, there's a whole nother world of options out there, consider doing word art that is done by actual artists. These are not overly expensive pieces and they absolutely elevate the feel and the kind of experience of your space. For instance, I'm a huge fan of Ed Ruscha's work. I love his Another Hollywood Dream Bubble popped or some of his ones that don't have a whole lot of sayings on them. Those are beautiful imagery in and of themselves. So pay attention to how that feels for your space. Or there's another person out there, just another option, Olivia Steele. She does all this work in 
neon. And that's another great way to kind of express something, but in a new and fresh material and a different way altogether. I just love these pieces. So these are ways to do word art in a way that does not feel super tired and done for 20 years. So number four on trends that need to go bye-bye is Edison bulbs. Guys, we've done them. They're done. It's over. They're pointless anyway, to be honest. Really, they were a trend for a while and it was kind of fun, but the real problems with an Edison bulb are twofold. One, they have an extremely low lumen level. Ooh, what does that mean? That means low light output. You put them in a fixture, you can't see a thing. So scrap that for that reason. And then for the second reason that they're just no good is that they only come in one Kelvin lighting, which is super low, kind of almost level of candlelight. And that's really not helping you a whole lot if you need to see something. I'd rather use a candle, quite frankly. So these are just done, we're done, go away, goodbye, take them out, use another bulb. Oh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about with lumens and Kelvin levels, you definitely have to go take a look at my all about lighting where I explain and how to understand how lighting affects both what you design with and the overall feel of your space. Super important, linked right here. All right guys, so number five on the trends that really need to see the door is thrifting for thrifting's sake. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, if you're gonna go to a thrift store, have some intention around it. I love repurposing. I think it's a huge way to grab unique pieces, to create new elements that really kind of dial in your style statement. It's a wonderful way to complete a space. But you have to go into a thrift store with some intentionality. Don't just go in, buy 10 things, throw it in a space, and expect it to look like something other than the store that you bought it in. That is not the way to go. Here's what you're gonna do if you're gonna thrift intentionally. What you wanna do is you wanna find pieces that you know that you can transform into something that works for you and your space. Like, I love this little wingback chair with the curved arm that they found in this pooty pink that was just really ugly. And they took it and they put it in this fabulous kind of colorful damask. Look how fabulous that is. So reupholstering is a great option, especially for older pieces because it gives them a whole new life. Secondly, if you find good case pieces like this funky old blue cabinet, I don't know what it is, looks kind of mid-century modern, but has kind of a tired turquoise on it, right? They took that puppy and they turned it into something super sexy with that nice kind of gunmetal gray with those beautiful new handles on it. That's a fabulous way to repurpose something. It probably cost them $15 and then a paint job. So that's a great way to look for way things that are salvageable and will give them a new life. I just love repurposing, but don't leave them alone. That's the rule of thumb if you're gonna go through storing. Guys, if you're liking these tips and you're finding them really helpful, oh, please subscribe because it really means a huge difference to the channel. And what happens is when you bang the bell and make sure you hit the notification button, then you're definitely gonna know every time I drop a video and you'll learn more. Okay, so number six on the trends that just have to be shown the door is beanbag chairs. Now, I get it. We all like to feel super comfortable in our homes, but this is just ugly. This is so ugly, it reminds me of old waterbeds. And you can comment down below if you remember waterbeds. Now, some of you are going to say, but I've mentioned beanbag chairs for kids. I love beanbag chairs for children. In fact, if you saw this video on designer rooms for children, I actually feature them. Why do I like them for kids? Because they're small scaled, they're kind of thematic in nature. They can be a little koala bear or something that looks really cute. And kids love rolling around on the floor and they just pop up on that beanbag. That's fine. 
Not for adults. There's a lot of other ways to get comfortable in your living room that doesn't look like this. Let's talk about that for a second. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite solutions, if you need a little extra seating and you want to feel super comfy, is to do a stack of super tailored floor pillows. Ooh, I love this look. It's very she-she. And if you know the roche Bois furniture line, which is a very fine, high-end designer line out of France, they have a ton of these beautiful floor cushions, which are just really, really elegant. And they're super comfortable to hang on or perhaps you do an upholstered poof that's really super comfy. I love this one with the big chunky wool cable knit. That's great. There's also the ones that kind of look like the Moroccan fabrics with the extra stitching on them. All of those are great solutions and they're way better looking than a beanbag chair. And honestly, you can get up and get out of them easier too. So that's really important to consider when you're wanting to feel comfy in your living room space. Number seven on things that need to go away is macrame. Oh, I can hear it right now. All you boho gals are going, wait just a minute. But I am here to tell you that this is not a thing you want to reprise from the 70s. There's a whole lot of other better design style statements that you can get other than strung together string. Macrame was cheap and looked cheap in its first iteration and it still does today. But you want some texture on your walls? Let's take a look at some options. Oh my gosh, look at these beautiful mud cloths. Those are exquisite and they look very sort of handcrafted and amazing. Here's another absolutely beautiful piece that looks like it's kind of an African collar of some sort. There's beautiful beading as well as reading on it. There's a lot of different options that aren't super expensive, but deliver a good boho look for you without resorting to string art. If you feel the need to tie up some string somewhere, knit yourself a scarf. I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, this last trend that has to die, I'm talking to you contemporary people. And this is uber minimalism. Now, don't freak out. I'm not talking about clean. I'm not talking about minimalism. In fact, here's a beautiful room that I absolutely adore that definitely falls into the minimalist category. Or this lovely dining room with just a single suspended credenza on the side with a piece of art above it. That's all lovely. It's all very contemporary. It all works. It all looks like real life. Here's the problem with this uber minimalism. Honestly, if you understand where this trend comes from, then you'll understand why it doesn't really work. Here's the deal is that all of the inspo pictures that we all see in Instagram all day long and all the rest of that, those are styled by photographers. So they literally go into spaces and they pull out the books and they pull out drawers and cabinets and style things up so that there's almost nothing there. And that's great for the photographs. And it's very, you know, architectural. It's almost a construct of elitism if you really want to get down to it. But the reality of it is no one lives this way. Life is messy. Everybody needs storage. Everybody needs drawers. Where are your kids going to play? Where are they going to put their toys in a space like this? It doesn't work. Okay. So we have been directed by these images to think that this is actually minimalism. This is not minimalism. It's uber minimalism. And it's a trend that's got to, it's honestly a trend that died before it even got started because no one lives this way. Now, clean minimalist, like this beautiful hallway with just two pictures and a single piece of sculpture at the end. That's gorgeous. But you can see they have a credenza. That's where they put their car keys and their phone. So it makes sense to live in a minimalist space, but uber minimalism, bye bye. Okay, that's it guys. Now, 
Don't go away because what I've done is I've put together a special playlist that goes over contemporary, transitional, and traditional design videos so you'll understand how to put these together for your thing. So click right here on this button and then you'll be able to go through the whole playlist and then I'll see you guys next week.